Uh, we already discussed the types of memory and we said that uh, RAM is one of the internal memory that is used in a computer. So we are saying that uh, it is used for storing data, programs and results of a given program. It is uh, a read-write memory which stores data until the machine is working. So we say, we say that uh, RAM is the first, uh, a very fast in the first place. It is, uh, has high speed and it is a volatile this is a very common term that we use in computer systems which means that loses data uh, when power is lost on power loss data is erased when machine is switched off so we now discuss two types of uh, memory or ram when you talk about access time you're talking about how much time it takes to address a given or to reach a given address. When I give you the example of a shelf, and we say that it is divided into many cells or many cubes. So the, when we say the time it takes to come to this address and the time to come to this other address or this other address, well, it is the same for RAM. And that is very important because when we talk about uh, secondary storage, we say that the access time is different because we need to rotate a disk a number of times so the ones that are closest to the center are normally accessible faster than because the disk is running it's like but uh, the record player of the old days used to put a disk and then uh, play, place the arm on top of the disk and then it would it would keep rotating whereas uh, the this arm is moving to and fro from, uh, along the radio distance uh, of, uh, of this disk. So uh, this is the radius. So the data that is stored closer to the center of the, of the disk is accessible much faster than the one that is accessible towards the edges of the disk. And, but that is now contrary to the, this is the, the one we call secondary storage Secondary storage, which we call magnetic disk. Magnetic disk, this is what we are calling it RAM. It's saying that the access time for RAM is the same for even any address, whereas the access time for the secondary storage uh, devices for like uh, hard disk are, are different. So that is what this explains. And therefore, you see that RAM is more expensive than. Uh, than this secondary storage. You also see that RAM is volatile. And that is why we normally require uh, backup power, the one that is called an interruptible power supply. This is the one that is normally find supporting computers so that they do not uh, lose power or they do not lose power in case there is sudden power loss. That allows you some time to save the data that you might, uh, you might have had. So we now see that there are two types of uh, RAM, uh, static RAM and dynamic RAM. So in case you have not come across the, the, the RAM that you're talking about, for computers, this is how the RAMs look like. Of course, they are slightly different from the, the RAMs for, for the phones and for other kinds of uh, computer devices. But for the personal computers, which you call PCs, uh, it looks like this one, but it is definitely different for other kind of uh, computing devices. So we now discuss the two types, the static RAM, and dynamic RAM. Now you see that the static RAM indicates that the memory retains its content as long as power is being supplied. However, data is lost when power gets down due to the volatile nature. So this is the very common kind of RAM that we have. And we say that uh, it uses a chip of matrix of six transistors and no capacitors. And therefore, transistors do not require power to prevent uh, leakage. And so SRAM does not need to be refreshed on a regular basis. And you will notice a, a very unique difference between SRAM and dynamic RAM because we say that uh, with, with static RAM, you do not require to keep on reminding. The idea is this, where we are not talking about refreshing. We do not need to keep on reminding the location where we have stored the data, which data we have stored. I have written uh, some, some names like uh, static here. But as long as I have not loved this one, it will still remain being very visible and very clear. But then I assume that you have an, a, other kind of paper where when you write, think about the papers that fade. When you write something like, uh, like your name, uh, or you can write cat, you can write a dog, whichever. 
like after um, there are some papers that when you write after some one year if, if you had written this name cat or dog it will have faded you will not be able to record to remember or to see what was written and i'm using just this as an analogy analogy allows you to figure out what i'm talking about so this kind of paper that requires you to write again so that you can remember what was written here like you keep on writing like what you had written on them will have faded. They will not be very clear. These kind of boards are the one that we say they require to be constantly to be refreshed. That is where I'm trying to explain this word. And therefore, there are kinds of memory that requires to keep on being rewritten over and over again uh, so that the data that is stored there does not fade. And that kind of uh, memories that uh, require to be kept on being refreshed are called dynamic memory. But the ones when you write it, you can go and come back 10 years later, you will still find uh, you are writing still there, then that is the one we are calling SRAM. So there are those two types of memory uh, of RAM that are that unique. So that is the idea. One of them does not use capacitor, and capacitors are the one that allows you to uh, store or refresh but on the other hand, when uh, they do not require to be refreshed, then they will still have data that uh, was stored uh, even earlier. So we are saying that uh, SRAM uses more chips than dynamic RAM for the same amount of storage space, and making them quite expensive in comparison to the static RAM. SRAM is also used uh, in cache memory, and it has very fast access. So we are saying that uh, because of uh, the characteristics that we have said, it can be used as cache memory. So I remember we just said we discussed about cache memory, mean memory and, and the secondary storage. But cache memory most of the times is got, is like is divided up uh, from, it is caught from main memory, it is reserved to serve as, uh, as cache memory. So it is like you tell you have your main memory here, you get a portion of this one and you call it cache memory so that you are going to be using it to store temporary data for your processing because it has very fast access. So the characteristics of, S of static RAM, it, has, it is that it has long life, does not require to be refreshed, it is much very fast, it can be used as cache memory, it is uh, has physical that is why I have added here, large physical size, not necessarily the capacity. Notice here we are not talking about capacity, but we are talking about uh, the physical size. When you, when you see it, it is very big because we are saying that it requires more electronic components to store than uh, the dynamic uh, kind of uh, memory. So the other thing is it's very expensive and it has very high power consumption. And you say that uh, unlike the static RAM, it requires to be continually refreshed in order to maintain the data. This I have already discussed uh, at length. Why does it require to be refreshed con uh, constantly? The reason is because uh, the data is like it is stored by a capacitor. And as you will know in, a, in future, that capacitor will discharge uh, with over time. And therefore, that is why we are talking about refreshing. For it to keep to maintain the voltage can be recognized to start for some data, it requires to be topped up. Like if you draw a graph of time versus voltage, then capacitor will keep on discharging, uh, discharging as time pro progresses. So you require to keep on discharging it again so that it, before it goes back the, the uh, voltage for the data to be recognized, then it requires to be refreshed over and over again. So this kind of refreshing that I'm now drawing is the one that we are seeing is characteristic of uh, dynamic memory. So we are saying one thing, one uh, range of dynamic RAM is that because of the capacitor, it is a bit cheap and smaller in comparison to the static RAM, because we are saying that uh, or in comparison to the one that requires about six transistors, to store one set of data, this one only requires uh, only one capacitor and one transistor to store one set. And therefore, they are much, much smaller in comparison to this SRAM. So the other characteristics of dynamic RAM is that it, it has short data lifetime because of this continuous uh, refreshing that you require. You keep on, uh, you keep on uh, topping up the power. 
that it needs to be continuously refreshed. I have explained that. It is much slower compared to the static RAM. It is used as RAM. It is now not used as cache. So uh, it is not used. It is not used as cache. But, but we have seen that uh, the static RAM is much more used as cache memory. So sometimes you might hear me talk, uh, calling this cache or cache. They, I think cache is more appropriate, but there are people you hear people calling it still cache, as though there is an emphasis on the latter two is. Eh? So uh, forgive me for using whichever. Uh, just understand that I'm referring to the same uh, the same concept of cache memory. So it is much more in size because we have, as we have seen, with one capacitor in comparison to. Uh, a, a one capacitor and one transistor in comparison to the six that we have said uh, in static memory that simply means that there is a reduction in size is less expensive and consumes less power in comparison to the static uh, memory